Okay, I'm gonna I'm be building the 1903 Wright Flyer. Balsa wood, tissue paper, and thread construction kit. It's fairly well detailed. All the materials are in the simple little box container that comes uh, with everything laser cut and ready for assembly. I've already laid out the uh, spar locations and the wing type supports that go as shown on the plan here and I've also taken my plan and covered it with a sheet of plastic wrap so I don't get glue on the plan itself like I said I've got the wings ribs in place and I've been gluing everything in position with uh, some Loctite go-to glue it works real well I've glued a sample couple pieces of material together and I can't break it apart for nothing so it's really quite durable and it looks to be doing the job. I'm now working on the leading edge spars. I've put down a temporary piece of 16th inch material to hold the wing ribs up while I position the spars and I've got them in position and held in place with the push pins and some pieces of toothpick which happen to be the same thickness as the 16th inch little support that I've got running from end to end so when I go to glue the spar in place it's elevated enough where it doesn't stick to the plastic nor does it stick to any of my support materials so it was easy enough to get the ribs on that was pretty simple cut and dried but now we're gonna glue the spar edges top and bottom however we like to describe them on the bottom wing and the top wing so I'll uh, get back here in a little bit with the gluing process of putting the spars in place Let's see how simple that works okay back at the uh, 1903 Wright Flyer balsa kit and what we're gonna do is uh, glue the spar leading edge spar to the uh, wing ribs and what I've done is I've made little marks along the edge of the wing spar and those little marks are where I'm going to apply the glue and I've done that all the way up and down the entire length of the spar you'll notice the little bottles of testers paint those work really good as a little weight device holds the balsa in place in areas where I know it's most important and keeps the balsa in place weighted and such and I'll be applying the glue here momentarily and then placing that spar in its position and lining those little marks up with each rib as shown here I've also got the little ribs pinned in place where they weren't quite straight enough to be in line with the marks on the plan such as in this case we'll just take a little pin and put it alongside the rib there and put it in place I've also got my entire plan on this little half inch three-quarter inch maybe thick sheet of styrofoam which works really really well pays to save some of that styrofoam stuff when we get packages from uh, Amazon or eBay or whoever anyhow we'll be back shortly and I'll uh, be gluing that spar into place 
Okay, we've got the spar glued in place. As I mentioned a moment ago, we uh, marked uh, the spar itself with uh, a little pencil and marked each of the little ribs where they all interconnect. And I've glued each and every one of those little spots. It's hard to see the glue, but it's there. And once I've got the spar in position, I pinned it in all kind of different locations for the sake of holding it in place. I got the little pins pushing on it. So this side pushes against that side. And then I got the little testers bottles, which are being used as little weights to hold it down. And once again, I've got the little pieces of toothpick that hold it up in position, keeping all the glue from sticking to things it shouldn't stick to. So that appears to be a good working way to get that spar in place because that's, uh, that's a lot of detail in getting that particular piece. And that's the first one. We've got to do the spar on the uh, bottom wing as well, which we'll do that one next. But that's basically how I got that together and it looks real good. If need be, I may have to put a little extra glue in some really small places, but I think we've got it. So we'll be back. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, much like I did here on the top wing layout, I marked each of the little wing ribs on the uh, strut at the uh, top end of each of the bottom and the upper wing. So what I'm gonna do is do the same here. I'm gonna mark each one of these wing ribs all along. And that'll give me a, a working point where I can uh, add glue to those marks. And then of course all the wing ribs are all in place and lined out, lined out in uh, their proper positioning. So I get them all set up to go and all my pieces touch tip to tip and so on. And then we can glue that uh, spar into place. So like I now mentioned, I have a little mark in each of those little wing ribs. And those little marks are where I'm going to place my little dabs of glue. And then I'll turn that spar sideways and basically pin it into place like we did uh, for the uh, top wing. So we have it on its upper edge right now and then we'll just turn it 90 degrees and glue it to each and every one of those little wing ribs. Okay, I'm now working on the fuselage layout. Uh, I'm working on the left hand side right now. I've pre-cut the pieces that fit the uh, plan. And that way I'm making sure they're all going to be the same. And I also went ahead and built a uh, second or cut a second set. Which I'll put them together as well to assemble the uh, left and right fuselage. And I, I'm assuming I need to be real careful because left and right shows some uh, pieces on the back side in the ghost image. So I'm assuming I got to go left and right. So one side is going to be on the outside. One's going to be on the inside. That way it works out right when the uh, two pieces are assembled uh, together. I've also gone ahead and picked up another type of glue a uh, Loctite super glue gel control it's got a real nice little tip on it which makes for easy application of the glue into areas that are real small and which the uh, oops which the uh, Loctite go glue is so much bigger so I've got a smaller applicator for those 
very small pieces. Uh, according to the instructions, they're uh, telling me to go ahead and build these U-shaped pieces separate and then install them uh, after they dry. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and built uh, each of these little U sections. In this case, I built the, the first pair for the uh, uh, top wing for each end. One here, one here, and I'll build the ones for the uh, bottom wing. I'll build those momentarily and then install them. Okay, got the first fuselage. I guess I could call it the left side done. Got all the little details, all the little pieces are in place. My little, my little jig right here I've got uh, set up again. And I'm going to do the right hand side, which will be a mirror image of the left hand side. So we'll get that done here in just a moment and show you how that turns out. Alrighty, we've now got the... Uh, the right side fuselage all done. It's the exact opposite of the other one. Now we got them both. Okay, we've got the U pieces done at each end on the uh, top wing. And we've gone ahead and pulled all the pins. And we have what looks like a pretty darn good looking wing. Now, do the same on the second one. Okay, I've got both the fuselage uh, left and right uh, frame members assembled and I've stuck them here on the plan in the upright position a 90 degree angle to the plan well, both of them and of course the reason for that is to get these center supports in place or I should say the fuselage braces so we can glue that pair there and glue this pair there and then we've got one at the end and this one here goes at the end but it goes on a bit of an angle so we're gonna put that one on a little bit later and that's where the also the rail guide will go which we have yet to build but we'll get that in place shortly and that right there is showing you the rail guide and the uh, angle of the frame support in that regard which then goes along this point here okay quick little run over here you got the uh, little support here Got that little guy built, the rail guide, and mounted on its particular brace. So we're going to glue that into the position there. In the meantime, we've been cutting out the pieces for the uh, propeller mounts. Got them all cut out. And we'll be gluing them together as well. And at the same time, we'll take this piece of wire and cut a piece for the left side, a piece for the right side. And according to the instructions, we have to cut a notch or a small groove or press like it says the wire into place. And that goes down the center of each of those propeller uh, mounts. 
So we'll get that all cut up and set in place and glued together and we should have that done shortly and on the same as the uh, fuselage components and then we'll go from there. Okay, moving on, we've got the propeller mounts all built. Two of them as uh, per the plan. Gonna put the, uh, the metal uh, piece in there for the shaft and I'll do that here shortly. I've also got the rudders built and one side tissued. You got that one there, this one here. I've got a couple pieces of tissue, which there's a tissue that goes on both sides. And what I've used is just a simple glue stick and apply glue to the uh, exposed wood and then take and lay the little tissuey stuff on there let it dry real good overnight and then uh, trim it to fit I've also assembled the uh, upper and lower elevators and the lower elevator I've got all the ribs in place I've got the ribs here for the uh, upper elevator I'll be putting those on a little bit later as well and then of course we uh, tissue both of those guys as well and then we'll move on to elevator struts so that's the progress at the moment upper and lower elevators got one ribbed got both my rudders moving along and also my propeller mounts okay we got the two rudders uh, all tissue papered together both sides nice neat and clean I just went ahead and put the tissue paper on a little bit oversized like I did here on these uh, elevators got the oversized tissue paper and then when that dries real well we'll go ahead and just trim it with the exacto blade and then uh, start to assemble the elevators and the rudders got the uh, I guess we call them the the rudder struts in place six of them and then this rudder portion here will sit on top of them it's a bit of a balancing act with these uh, six little rudder struts but the uh, super glue stuff that I'm using, this Loctite, works real good at putting these things in place. You give it a second or two to move it into position real good and they dry pretty hard and everything works out real well there. Okay, here we have the, the rudder pieces put together. glued into place I got the little bottle of paint there just holding everything nice and tight that looks good we'll go ahead then and glue these little extra rudder brace supports in place one over here one over here much like the plan shows you right there and we'll go from there Okay, we got the three elevator struts up and together. That's a very, very tough job right there. Those pieces are having to touch in such a small location there to stay glued together. But I believe we've, we've got them just where we want them. Put a little bit of glue on the top there and kind of smear it into place, giving it a little extra hold. And then we'll put the whole elevator and strut assembly together, such as the picture. Okay, now we're going to do a little bit of this threading work. And it appears to be real difficult, but it's really not. 
what they've done is they put a little dab of the super glue right there on that end piece and the first little uh, wing rib and it glues in just a couple seconds so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move along each one of these little ribs put a little dab of glue and follow with the thread and then just work our way all the way down here to the very end and um, we should be in good shape as far as that first uh, thread on the wing goes okay like I said about the uh, the thread on these uh, wing tips use a little tiny bit of super glue and then slowly pull the little thread put a little dab of glue on the end of the rib wing or the wing rib and then hold the little thread in place and it dries almost momentarily so about you know, maybe a third of the way almost a halfway there we'll get back on that okay I've got all the uh, threading done here on the <clears throat> front edges of uh, the wing tips on both uh, upper and lower wings just a little tiny bit of trimming to do here at the end piece but they uh, both look real good so the next step of course now is to do the tissueing part of this project at least on the wings the rest of the little ones I've got them pretty much done there and a couple others so moving on okay the propeller mounts are built now we have to make some propellers what I've done is I've taken a picture of a propeller and I've sized it pretty close to the length of the propeller on the model we're gonna take this little layout here place it on top of the piece of material we'll then hold that in place and then mark the outlines of the propeller and we'll do that on both pieces for both the props and we'll either uh, dremel the shapes or hand carve and then Dremel so we'll get back and show you how that uh, turns out okay we've got the upper and lower elevators all assembled and put into position on the fuselage I've got the little uh, wire pulley shaft in place to hold everything in uh, alignment at the moment so we've got this assembly done for some uh, good detail shots there oops so on to the next step okay while I'm letting uh, a few items dry here I went ahead and painted some of these pieces kind of looking ugly but they'll look much better when they're taken out of their uh, their molds here uh, painted these to give some more added realism to the model just for a little sake of added detail okay on the uh, instructions here it says cut or press a small groove into the center of these as we mentioned earlier for this wire to fit the uh, balsa at least the balsa that I have is pretty uh, pretty tough to do uh, to push this or or try to cut with a with a uh, exacto knife so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my little Dremel tool that has a little blade attached it's just about the same size as the wire so I'm gonna take a Dremel and Dremel a little slot in each one of these just deep enough so this wire can fit into place there 
Okay, the little uh, Dremel tool did a good job of cutting that little groove out for that uh, propeller uh, support. Okay, I'm going to use the same tool to uh, cut out my rough uh, shapes on my propeller. That's gonna work pretty well too. Here we have a pretty rough basic shape for a prop. A little bit extra sanding and carving. It ought to look pretty good here shortly. Okay, a little more rough carving turns this into that. It's not the greatest looking propeller in the world, but I guess it gets the, the idea going. Okay, I know the video jumps around a little bit from um, part to part, but I'm trying to get uh, some clarity going on each and every little detail. I got the propeller uh, mounts or pulley shaft or whatever they like to call them. No, that's not a pulley shaft. That's a prop shaft, sorry about that. Anyway, we got those in place, glued in place. It didn't look too bad, I mean, it's not the best. <laughs> Can always do better, you know. Okay, went ahead and did the uh, tissue on the uh, underside of the wings. I've got this uh, upper wing done here. I've got the lower wing over there. All tissued up, nice and tight. Once again, I use the simple little glue stick. A couple places uh, I found the the glue wasn't uh, sticking so well, so I put a little glue on the back side of the tissue and then kind of rubbed it in a little carefully, and it adhered through the tissue to the balsa wood below. So, in a case of a small place where the, the tissue didn't adhere so well. Uh, that little technique worked out just fine. Okay, we got the uh, tissue on the bottom side of uh, both the wings. And I'm trying to get it into more particularly crucial areas so that when I put the tissue on the top, the tissue on the bottom is uh, going to accept the tissue overlay, so when I fold it over on the bottom side, it, it's going to work out well. So anyway, I just had a couple small places where we uh, added an extra bit of glue and folded it up over the edge there, as you can see. And then we'll lay the next layer of tissue on the top. And get that to cover the entire top side of this wing. And of course, we'll need to wrap these edges here, tidy that up a little bit, as well as this one down here. Okay, I've got the uh, tissue on both sides of the wing, on the bottom, of course, and then I've got the tissue on the top. As you see here, what I did is I made the tissue a little bigger than the wing itself and then trimmed it to be about, I don't know, half inch, maybe three-eighths of an inch all the way around. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that three-eighths inch, fold it over, glue it into place all the way around, and that'll be a nice little wrap. And then from the top, barely visible so I think that's gonna look real good okay here's what we got so far we got both of the wings set up and I've used these jigs that come on the bottom of the, the box and cut them out 
and then the wings slide right through like that. Now I'm going to start putting up the uh, wing struts and we've got W4, W5, W6, W7. We got 7, 2, 5, and 4 of those. So we got those seven there and these uh, two here. We got five of these and then we got four of those. So, and then we'll just follow the plan. The plan basically shows you where each of these little wing struts go. And they're numbered so you know which one goes where. So we're going to start installing them and then we'll get back. Got the uh, front <clears throat> wing struts put in place. You got to hold your breath when you put these things on. They're uh, really touch and go. But got them all in place. Once again, we use that Loctite. I can't see that. That Loctite super glue, which works so well. Everything goes into place and it gives you a second or two to kind of get them glued in. So we got them in. Make sure you get them in the right ones because there are some that got these little tiny holes. You can't really see them. There's one there. That's where you got to run the uh, threading through just here a little bit later. Anyway, we got those in. We will now do the ones on the back side. Okay, now we see all the struts are in place. Front and back. and clean and ready to go we'll cut these little framing cards out here shortly and then we'll start doing uh, the threading uh, between each and every one of these struts okay FYI I took a little push pin and what I've done is I'm making sure these little holes where the threads gonna go are uh, nice and clean so I'm pushing that through each of the pre drilled holes and uh, it's gonna make this threading a little bit easier okay what I've done here is I've taken the plastic wrap off of my styrofoam that way it was getting kind of hard to see through the plastic so what I did is took it off so I could look at these particular details about prop mount locations, engine locations, the, the chain gear drives, and the pilot footrest location, as well as being able to figure this rudder support piece. That's gonna go here on this uh, top edge. And just keep this thing all lined up nice and neat with the original plan layout and that way I can get my details as this thing is coming together real nice now we have the, uh, the first row of thread stuck in on the uh, I would assume the back side of the wings and let me make a suggestion put the uh, propeller mounts in first because the thread has to go in between them so get those prop mounts in place ahead of time and then you can run the string, thread, whatnot through it. And also I took a small dab of super glue and put it on the end of the thread here. And then I wiped it off with a tissue. What it did, it would glue the end of the thread together and it made it a lot easier to get that thread through all these little micro holes in the, in the 
assembly of the wing struts. So use the super glue on the uh, end of the thread there. Wipe it off so it's not a big glob and that'll take care of that. How about that? Got a majority of the threading all done. That's really, uh, really looks good. It also helps make the, uh, the wing nice and stable, much stronger. Really nice. It's a slow process. As you notice, I'm using a lot of clothes clips to hold the thread in place. And when I keep it tight with the clothes clips, I can then glue in those little particular areas right there and everywhere, holding things nice and tight so I don't have to use the uh, fingers or whatever else. So, looking good. Okay, went ahead and put in the uh, gear assembly and the pilot handle on the fuselage. We'll go ahead and we'll put a piece of thread between that little wheel and that little wheel and give it the illusion of a chain. Of course I could always go out and find a little chain somewhere and put it on there. I'm putting together a few uh, little details. This is the engine, which there's the engine location there. I've got a little gear drive on one side. I guess they call it maybe a pulley wheel, which of course then these two guys will connect to this as well. And I'm going to, just for the heck of it, I'm going to put a couple of old plastic model parts on here. Maybe give it a little more added realism. Uh, it's not anything close to the original engine. But I thought I'd just throw a little something together to give it a little extra pizzazz. I went ahead, <clears throat> for the sake of uh, structural integrity, out of these two cross members where the lower wing sits on the fuselage and by putting those across there like that I've got a longer area to be able to glue to the bottom of the lower wing instead of just a little spot there and a little spot there and that spot and that little spot so by having that long structural member there I'll have a lot more gluing surface Went ahead and uh, glued the, the wings to the fuselage. Nice and tight. Now we'll add the other features. Move along. Okay, it's it's engine time. I've got the the gears assembly, gear chain assemblies in. I got the engine in place to a point where I got the the gears are uh, glued together. I had to get a couple of shims to hold that engine up. So these two little gear chain assemblies would come together there at the motor mount. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut a couple of these pieces and mount them underneath the engine and give that some stability. And I'd also recommend, uh, I'd also make a note of it as well to probably do these gear assemblies and the motor before I uh, did the threading on the front of the flyer. It was kind of tricky getting those gear chain assemblies in place, having to feed it through the the threading. It did make it difficult, but I managed to get it 
taken care of. I also was able to get the rear assembly together and that looks real good. So that looks okay like that. So that's where we're at. Now for the rudder assembly. What I've done, you got a couple of, uh, I should say four pieces. Uh, a couple are a little shorter than the others. The two longer ones, I'm assuming uh, if all goes well, uh, mount to the bottom of the rudder. And these two uh, on the shorter side will mount to the top of the rudder, which then mounts to the rudder assembly on the top wing. So what I've done is I've made a kind of a little jig of sorts to glue this together. The uh, top piece, I'm going to get these two points here together. Then the top piece at 1 16th square is 1 and 7 8 inches long end to end. And that puts each of those two points there into those two little points right there. So I'm going to glue that 1 16th piece there and that piece there and then I'll flip the piece of it, this assembly upside down or I'll turn it over and then I'll mount it on the top of the rudder there and then I'll mount it onto that rudder assembly there and then we'll do something similar to the bottom. Okay, here they are glued together. The lower one is pinned in place. It's not glued to the plane yet, but I do have the little cross braces glued in place. I got this other one for the top. It's all glued in place. Like I mentioned a moment ago, we'll take that one, flip it over, and glue it to the top of the rudder. And then the other one, we'll take it and we'll glue it to the bottom of the rudder. And then we'll uh, take that whole assembly and glue it into place right there. Went ahead and cut those little shims for the bottom of the engine. Stuck them in place, glued them in place. So that, that gives the engine a, a stable position to make up for the slack in those two uh, chain gears. All right, we've got the uh, little chain thread in place. The, the thread itself is pretending to be a chain. Okay, I put the little thread on the uh, gear assembly front to back got it drying in place that'll be the pilot's control where we see the little yeah, you can't see there it is you can see a little bit of it that's the little hand controller there just to the left of the alligator clip we're going to connect that to the pilot so he can control the uh, that portion of the flyer. Carefully knocking out some of the details, some of the threading for the different strut supports. Okay, some of the final uh, details. Got the elevators in, connected, got the pilot, Mr. Right in, got the rudder situated in place, got the tie wires in place.
The only thing we lack right now is to uh, finish up the uh, propellers. We're going to carve on them a little bit more and dremel them. Give them a little more shape and uh, consistency to what a real propeller might look like on this particular model. So we're almost there, people. There she is. Pretty much complete. I just got the propellers glued in place today. But there's a pretty much everything in place. It's been a couple of weeks worth of work trying to get this thing all together. And it's turned out really good. I haven't broke anything. I found a couple of different ways to do it when I try to build another one. So there you go. Any questions, give me an ask.